It's a knowledge generating organization, but how it generates the knowledge, the kinds of sensibilities that it brings to bear in generating the knowledge, the kinds of things it decides to be knowledgeable about, that's where, uh, that, that's where the real interesting conversations have to happen. The communities that I want to support most in the future are, are and will be going through generations of internalized, interpersonal, and systemic oppression. If we want this world to be a better place, it has to begin with contemplative and ethical leaders. How would contemplative practice inform what I would like to do in terms of social activism in my community? We're talking about what it means to be really human. Uh, it really feels like it's our moment and our time to, to wake up and, and rise up in a way and meet the moment. Mind and Life is an organization that has been dedicated to fostering an intimate dialogue between the contemplative traditions and modern science and modern Western scholarship. Mind and Life as an institution is always expanding the horizons of scientific discourse and inquiry, you know, kind of really kind of, you know, making the scientists and the scholars to really encouraging them to think big, think beyond their, the confines of their own discipline. But also there's an ethical, spiritual aspiration of wanting to understand what is our place in this world and what is the most constructive way of seeing the world and way of being the world and way of relating to the world and others. Certainly a part of the vision and mission of Mind and Life was uh, captured by Francisco Varela, one of the, the founders with, with Adam Engel and His Holiness, when he talked about the need to bring together experience, the first person as he called it, with the third person, objective measures, neuroscience and so on, which at that time was very revolutionary. Now, through the work largely of Richie Davidson and others, it's become standard practice in what's called contemplative neuroscience. One of the most significant shifts, I think, that the Dalai Lama has catalyzed in science came from the Mind and Life meeting in 2000. It was on destructive emotions. And at that meeting, on the third day, he turned to Richie Davidson and he said, look, you've been using tools of modern neuroscience to investigate depression and anxiety and fear. Why can't you use those same tools to study kindness and compassion? Simple question, complicated answer. That was a wake-up call. His Holiness has been very, very engaged, you know, his entire life, basically, in trying to uh, find ways to articulate uh, the wisdom of his own tradition in ways that would appeal to people across all sorts of different kinds of uh, traditions, belief systems, and so forth. But it's very instrumental to actually bring the perspective of science and the methodology of science to investigate the nature of mind from the point of view of these ancient traditions who have been at it in their own laboratories, which are called monasteries and meditation centers, for thousands of years. What's happened is that the vision that he articulates now, some decades later, is not based in Buddhism. It's based on science because he wants to reach everyone. He doesn't want it to be partisan, so to speak, just for this group or that group, but a message for the world. And he feels science offers the, the best base for that. So when I tell people about some Buddhist writing, Buddhist or literature, then they may not pay attention. When I explain, the scientist finding, Aaron Beck's sort of finding, then they pay some attention like that. So our top priority is happy life. So in order to achieve happy life means healthy body, healthy mind. So through training of mind, or some kind of shaping your own mind, through that way, bring mental peace. It's worthwhile. We are not talking about next life or heaven or hell of a Buddhist 
uh, salvation or nirvana. Yeah. We are not talking these things. Simply, how to uh, build happy individual, then happy family, then happy society, then ultimately happy humanity. He saw the importance of the dialogues in pushing a field forward, of generating a field, which is contemplative neuroscience. The most important thing that Mind and Life is doing is nurturing this next generation that will carry the ball and take this into the future. The Varela Awards were started in 2004 as a companion program for the Summer Research Institute. These young people are doing phenomenal research and it's totally changing the field. I studied the effect of loving-kindness meditation on neural synchronization during conversation. Mindfulness to try to help teenagers prevent depression relapse. Examine the effects of mindfulness meditation uh, on the gender stereotype effect. Compassion meditation and altruistic behavior. The interaction of between emotions and exploration. Mind and Life is really nourishing this next generation of scientists, practitioners, the likes of which I don't think has ever been present on this planet before. And I think Mind and Life is the uh, support, the seed, the catalyst for this whole field will continue to spread that methodology, which I think is the most powerful way we have to understand the mind, its workings, and what the potential is for the upside of human potential. Thank you.